What is Mercy? Mercy is a Transformers Prime fan game project, a choose-your-own-adventure story with pictures and music developed for YouTube. The way it works is you watch a video, and at the end of it, you get one to three links that continue the story. You may have to make some pretty big decisions, from places you want to visit to whether a character lives or dies. It's an incredibly large and complicated story that will have enough videos to act like a show in itself. Part 1, which includes over 60 videos and is available to play right now, can give you a playtime of half an hour. And that is just the very beginning of a massive story. Watch until the end of the video for a special shot of a major villain and song in the future of the game. The goal of Mercy is to act like a natural sequel, staying accurate to the lore and rules of the continuity, and it starts from the end of Predacons Rising. You are Predaking. In front of you is Starscream, terrified on the throne you cornered him on. Part 1 begins, the shortest but most decisive part of the game that will determine your main stories. You are given a large range of violent options, you are given passive options. You can take it very far, you can kill Starscream, you can decide what to do with his body. You can let Starscream go unharmed. The game, however, is immediately taking note of your level of aggression. You'll want to be careful because it will then determine what kind of predicting you are moving forward. Now you may be wondering, why are you Predaking? Is Predaking Emperor Kumquat's favorite character? The reasons you are Predaking are simple. You are a very young character. You can easily change and be molded. It isn't out of character for you to develop in these different ways because Predaking doesn't have a set behavior like Starscream. Making a story from Starscream's perspective is limiting. You can't offer options he wouldn't actually consider. But in Transformers Prime, Predaking shows potential for being incredibly violent or for being a calm noble giant. He's still learning who he could be, and in Mercy, Predaking will develop the way you choose. And you have a lot of power in being Predaking. Mercy makes you a big terrifying dragon to test what you will do with your power. You can be a kind person who uses your strength to help people. You can be a predatory monster. You have enough strength as Predaking to change the world, even if you are just a young Cybertronian kid. That is why you're Predaking. Mercy is a game of multiple parts that get longer and deeper as your personality and story become set. While part 1 focuses on Starscream, we quickly move on and bring in a large cast of characters outside of Transformers Prime, from other cartoons such as G1, Victory, Beast Machines, and Animated. It particularly includes fan-favorite IDW characters, reimagined to fit the lore of Transformers Prime and give them new backstories while still maintaining their original feel. It's important to make you, the player, a young, ignorant character like Predaking who doesn't know these characters. Being Predaking makes the game experience friendly to people who don't know Transformers well. Predaking doesn't know Cybertron, Transformers lore, or other characters. You get to learn all these things at a slow pace along with Predaking. It is a game of discovery and adventure, and you won't ever get to meet every character, see every place, and hear every story in a single playthrough. You are encouraged to play over and over again to unlock everything in this big universe, like finding the pieces to form a larger puzzle. The many paths are like twigs on branches. There are several hard-set stories, with different versions of them based on how nice or evil Predaking is. Part 1 is complete on YouTube, but it barely scratches the surface of the long and beautiful stories that will follow. I've fully written an example of what Mercy intends to be. I wrote the Space Adventure storyline, with the neutral variation, meaning Predaking is a calm and considerate person. You threatened but didn't hurt Starscream, you returned to the Autobots, you agreed to work at the spaceport landing site in construction. In this story, Bumblebee invites you to be security on a mission to bring Cybertronians and colonists home. You first bring the Vehicons back from Earth, then you bring back Junkions and Philosotronians. You then visit various campaign worlds, which I created to explain the absence of Transformers and Transformers Prime. Autobots and Decepticons were fighting on other planets over Energon, and now you must visit each one and bring back these armies. It is a special experience. Predaking gets to leave Cybertron and see all these planets. But then, you learn that something is wrong out there. There are fallen ships and Cybertronian armies have mysteriously gone missing. What is the cause of all this? You realize only too late that Quintessons are not behind this, but a single Cybertronian who became more powerful than you could imagine. Overlord is one of Mercy's main bosses, and perhaps the most difficult of them all. He appears to be calm and charming, but somehow this Decepticon General acquired invincible armor. 
He can't be harmed, so what chance do you have against him? Welcome to Hell. You are trapped on Overlord's planet and locked in a survival game. Escape him with your life, stop Overlord from reaching Cybertron and massacring all Autobots. You walk on eggshells. There is death around every corner. Overlord retains his terrifying qualities from IDW. Huge, strong, covered in guns, obsessed with Megatron, runs a prison where he makes prisoners fight each other for his entertainment. You will fear this character, hate him. But with all these evil qualities, why would you want to show him mercy? Now here's the name of the game. I take familiar characters, I present them how you expect them. Overlord is handsome and cruel, Freud is an asshole, Trepan is a sinister doctor. Sunder is a creepy boogeyman. But then there are the twists. I ask myself, how do I take these traditionally evil characters, make them do all the evil things they did before, and then shatter your expectations? Yes, Overlord was written to be redeemable. You read the story and you may end the story crying for him. I've been told that this really happened in reviews. The last chapter of your journey changes everything, and I hope to see you there. Stick around until the end of the video for another Overlord treat and a clip of his specially commissioned song. So what's next? When can we expect more videos? It will still be a while before I can release part 2, which is the video continuation of every path in part 1. On the writing side, there is new content always being worked on. I am working on complete stories to set up the skeleton of this universe. When I wrote the Space Adventure storyline, I now know who is present on Cybertron and when, and so I can have these characters appear again on other paths. Right now, I am developing the story that has Sunder as the main boss, a rare story that takes place in Iacon. In this story, Predaking ate Starscream at the start. Yep, he ate him. But then Predaking takes control of his life and tries to fight his new predatory urges. You meet the psychiatrist Freud only to figure out that your psychiatrist is very suspicious and actually hiding a demonic secret. This is a special supernatural story that I will create and release a written, playable version for Winter 2020. To read my work and play the stories, follow the link below for my archive of our own account. Now as I am writing beyond part 2 into part 3, 4, 5, 6, whatever, this allows extra time for my editor Tangent Express to edit the video scripts for part 2. This pattern gives you the stories ASAP, even if part 2 won't be out on YouTube for a while. You can read all the new content, play the special games, and see art as it comes out. I draw for the game myself, but my burden is lifted thanks to the help of artists in the fandom. If one picture takes Ember Kumquat 10 to 20 hours to draw, every picture I get speeds up how fast I can make the scripts into videos. Volunteer work from the fandom has been the most useful to me, and for everyone who has supplied me with a free picture, that means so much to me. I want to especially thank the top contributor of 2021, Lady and Robots, who supplied a ton of pictures for Part 2 and Overlord super quickly and out of the kindness of her heart. She alone pushed development of Part 2 well ahead. She supplied pictures for bad Predaking, very bad Predaking, who wants to hurt other characters. She drew fabulous Overlord, who knows he is terrifying and beautiful in that smirk of his. She even got a concept art done for Sixshot. She has been a joy to work with, and I appreciate all my artists who work with me again and again. Mina Mentia has also very kindly donated high effort concept art for the Scavengers, with more to come in. Pitchy donated a scene for the Space Adventure storyline. Noxily created some free concept art for two characters you can locate in the game. And there has been work in the past done too. Part 1 was all volunteer work, and during production time, we made pictures for Beyond Part 1, including Kat Mechu's Vehicons on Earth, Emma Wolf's 2020's Predaking eating a Vehicon, Demigod's Jetfire concept art. If I am forgetting something at the moment, I am very sorry, but super appreciative of my volunteer artists. Now I do a lot of commissions. There are always, at every given moment, several Mercy pictures in the process of being drawn. To speed up production, I pay artists. Some people have been very kind and given me discounts as well. This is why the Patreon is so important and please consider joining it if you like this game and want to see it come out faster. For only $3 a month, you can greatly impact how fast Mercy is made. At the moment, I don't have much support and because of that, a large amount of money comes out of my own pocket to pay for this project. 
With more support, we can get more art and more custom music tracks for this game. Every dollar goes to the project. Let me now showcase some spectacular work we got done thanks to commissions. The Brown Snake has provided some very colorful scenes that even include the new Predacon Ripclaw and Thundertron, the leader of the Star Seekers. Alex the Master has made some super cool action scenes, and my favorite is a nightmarish image of Predacon killing a Viagon. Mina Metia did some astonishingly professional concept arts for our bosses Overlord and Sunder, and I love the work of them whenever I want to nail the look of a major character. Scout Girl did some more part 2 scenes for us, including Starscream. We got a Swindle fan to deliver strong and charming Swindle based on the aligned video games, but with the attitude of Transformers Animated. Elusive Winds is a scenic artist who just gave me a spectacular picture of the Predacons dashing through the snow of planet Arduria. He also gave life to the mascots of Mercy, Bumble Puppies. Bumble Puppies have been creatures without concept art before, supposedly crazy adorable. When Elusive was showing me cute robotic animal designs before, I was like, yo can I rely on you for this? And oh yes, Elusive delivered. Look at these things, we need to make plushies of these. I have also commissioned a music artist, White Bat Audio, to make the final boss music for Overlord. It is a beautiful piece with action and sadness, but this will be released early to Patreon. The end of this video will showcase as just a snip of that song. If you want early access to the full song, as well as every special commission, big announcements, and progress reports, that is the place to go. For this $3 a month, the price of a cup of coffee, or half the price of a boba, you get to see everything we are making as well as greatly impact how fast Mercy is made. When new videos are being made, you will get what YouTube does not get. You can tell me how it's going as I test things out. Let me extend a warm thanks to my patrons now. Some of you have been supporting me since 2020, before I even had videos for Mercy completed. Thank you Scarlet Pulse for longtime loyalty and for becoming my friend and being such a good pillar of emotional support. Tsuki, Scarlet Pulse, Ocean Reaper, Patrick, and Star Chaser, your large donations were extremely generous and were transformed into gorgeous pictures. Thank you to the names I'm about to mispronounce, Askira, Jetre, Mandoade, Missal, Gori, hi Gori, that's the Overlord fan. Sorry, Quartet, Nathan, the Legionnaire, the one who is definitely not my boyfriend, Ren, Sam, Lettuce, Petal Birdie, Luna Knight, Sani, Billy Storm, and that's a Warrior Cats reference, Skyacea, Al, Alexia, Blue Pie, Eevee the Pokemon, Oof the Pumpkin Thing, Astrosaurus, which sounds like a Transformer like Jeff Soros. And for the people who threw in some donations for a short while, that was also very kind. I encourage this, because even if you donate $3 once, that stuff adds up if a lot of people do that. Thank you Blue Gamerheart, Moonstar, Carly, Annie, Abdulhey, Megatron, wow, thanks Megatron, Osren, Seppel Slil Kitty, Zero Ma- Ma- Le. Zero Maverick, Kivo, Chili Billy Thugging, Mega Man, Sentient, Shrimp, Arrowkey, Lachey, and Mewcat. I better have gotten everyone because this was me checking the list on Patreon. And now as promised, a peek at the Mercy art commissioned by IDW artists Andrew Griffith and Alex Milne.